We are going to look at uh, the definition of knowledge in Imam al Haram and Juvani's uh, Matnul Waraqat, which is a primer in uh, Usul al Fiqh. Um, one, of, one of my long term projects is to map uh, rationality of Islamic uh, discipline, different Islamic disciplines. Uh, rationality in a broader sense and by rationality, mapping their rationality, I primarily but not exclusively mean uh, understanding different conceptions of uh, rationality, conceptions of rationality working behind them. Um, so we did uh, look at some of the definitions of Kalam, etc. in Imam Ghazali's Al-Mustaswa. And with Usul al-Fiqh, uh, we're starting with Matnul Waraqat, which is a primer, as I said, so it's suitable for our purposes, but we'll look at each and every important book uh, and different conceptions uh, gradually. Um, so uh, today we are going to look at his definition of knowledge and different types of knowledge and his definition of ignorance and uh, al-jahl and different types of uh, ignorance. So it's a primer, so it's very so it's just a few, uh, 16 pages in this uh, uh, edition. And the context is, this will figure one of the, uh, you know, sub types of knowledge. So then you have to de define, define what knowledge is. And he defines knowledge as... Uh, so knowledge is al-ilmu al-ilmu so knowledge what is knowledge ma'rifatul alumi to know the known ala ma huwa fil waqi' so that's fact and so knowledge is to know a thing according to how it is in reality, how it is in fact. So that's the uh, definition of knowledge. And one of the objections to this definition is that, uh, so, so we are defining knowledge here. And this is the definition. So the definition generally shouldn't use what, the word which you are defining because then if it does it's, it's a circular definition or circular reasoning which is a a fault in reasoning because if I knew what Malum was then why would I ask you to define um, what knowledge is okay so if I tell you knowledge is what is known so that's a circular definition because if I know what is known why would I, I ask you um, to uh, define knowledge so so that's one of the objections they always make when we study this book or these few pages and then they come up with different uh, alternative definition. But if you look at his uh, definition of uh, ignorance, uh, and we'll come back to that. Well, jahlu tasawwuru shayi ala khilaf ma huwa fil waqi. So this is not. So here he is defining uh, 
ignorance and ignorance is the exact opposite of what knowledge and here he doesn't use secular reasoning so we can just use what he uh, so we can refine his definition by just uh, referring back to his definition of ignorance and maybe this was just a um, you know um, error in printing rather and which continued so I don't know why. Um, so if we look at so we can just say knowledge is um, so thus we are adding to this we are sort of so knowledge is the subvuru shayi so knowledge is a conception of a thing according to how it is in reality so knowledge is a conception of a thing that's imam al haramain's definitions he is the te teacher of ghazali not a just uh, anybody <laughs> so knowledge is the conception of a thing according to how a thing is in reality or how a thing is in fact Oh, in fact so then we don't have any circularity so the basic um, thing in this definition is uh, correspond cor <coughs> conception of knowledge is not something uh, <coughs> mental although knowledge is in your mind obviously and you are making judgment or you have belief as we will look at different uh, uh, a couple of other definitions um, but the the heart of the definition is correspondence to uh, correspondence to reality okay so that's the heart of his definition now as I said uh, Norm normally people uh, call this his definition circular and they try to come up with other definitions so but uh, I try to do uh, repair the definition through looking at his definition of ignorance so. but we'll look at some other definition just to get some um, diversity uh, in these uh, definitions so for example Sayyid Sharif Jurjani um, in his uh, dictionary of Tarifat uh, define al ilm. He has more than one, but his this seems to be his uh, the one he it's his the, his top uh, definition of what is knowledge. Al ilm hu al aytikadu. So the one which. Uh, we did whole uh, etikadu al jazimu al mutabiq lil waqi so the definition we uh, repaired uh, one so that was a conception of a thing but here is uh, introducing another thing um and you see that he is bringing in so knowledge is a belief and a belief which is a firm belief al mutabiq corresponding to lil waqi effect or reality So correspondence to reality remains the same, uh, but in Imam al uh, definition, it's just a conception. Here he uses another term, belief. But uh, although this definition is uh, presented as an alternative to a purportedly circular definition, 
it introduces a new word, a belief, uh, which need further definition. But if we um, take belief as a, you know, something primary, which understands, uh, then knowledge is a firm belief, which is according to how the thing is. Uh, so then knowledge, according to Sayyid Sharif Jujani's definition here, is a firm belief which is which corresponds to how a thing is in reality or in fact so the correspondence to reality element is is there. Um, another definition which Sayyid uh, Sharif Jojani uh, mentioned, and he mentioned it with the word waqila, so it means that he is not that keen on that. It is said. Um, but let's look at that because it doesn't use the word belief. So it's almost similar to what our reform definition is. So huwa idraku idraku shay'i shay'i ala ma huwa So Idraq is basically the same as conception, so it is a conception of a thing. So knowledge is a conception of a thing. Is um, <clears throat> a conception of a thing. Is um, a conception of a thing, alama uh, huwa, according to how it is. So here it doesn't mention the belief, so it's just a conception. The Savor Idraq. There's some some difference between the Savor and Idraq, but at this point we can just translate both of them as. Now the last one I um, wanted, the last definition which uh, I want to take is one by Imam Razi because it uh, mentions something additional. So Imam Razi's definition, one of his definition, obviously. Uh, Imam Razi has written so many books, uh, uh, etc. That it's almost impossible to claim the authors. And the other thing is, here we are defining knowledge in the context context of usul fiqh. That's one of uh, important thing as well. So these are terminologies which uh, are con contextual in the sense that they, are in the, they should be understood in the con context of the discipline in which they are being defined. So, for example, if you go to another discipline, they might define a knowledge a bit differently, depending on. Uh, <clears throat> so, Imam Razi's definition of al-ilm is hukmu zahni. So, that's a new element in there. Hukmu zahni. Uh, al-jazim. So, al-jazim is the same as... Uh, uh, Sayyid Sharif Jurjani's first definition Al Mutabiq Limujib oh. So <clears throat> here he said that knowledge is a uh, judgment. Judgment of your mind. And it's a judgment which is a firm judgment. Okay. And, and the rest, al mutabiq al is corresponding to reality or the fact or a reason. Um, so the knowledge for him is a judgment of a, the judgment. Of, Mind for mind 
according to how a thing is. So now all these definitions, um, one thing is common to them is correspondence to reality. Um, it, whether it, knowledge is considered as a belief or a conception or a judgment um, correspondence to reality is what determine obviously if we don't have mind and if we can't raise we can't form beliefs and we can't form conception or we can't judge then obviously there's no knowledge even though reality might still be there uh, but you also need reality and correspondence to reality so so you have a so you have a mind or a zen and you have a correspondence and then you have a reality or the facts reality can be defined here as the collection of facts in this context uh, the collection of facts and you need and if there is correspondence then your knowledge believe you have knowledge otherwise you and it's pretty similar to modern epistemology but what one thing is lacking is in modern uh, epistemology because everything is start with the uh, an ice at least uh, since uh, Descartes and isolated cell. That's why modern knowledge straight away, or claim to knowledge, uh, straight away raises the question of uh, uh, because this self is isolated, it's always uh, correspondence is basically can't be presupposed. It is problem problematized from the start. That's why the problem of knowledge becomes uh, the problem of. Uh, skepticism and modern epistemology's uh, main task is to show how a self-enclosed I mean self-contained reality we call self uh, can have a knowledge about something which is outside it and which is reality so this huge gap between knowledge and reality mind and reality and filling this gap becomes the task of modern epistemology since um, Descartes whether you try to bridge that gap and try to claim that this gap doesn't exist like Heidegger or pragmatist it doesn't matter but the problematic is there but that problematic doesn't exist for Islamic uh, uh, epistemology or for medievalist uh, or for ancient uh, epistemology for that that matter. So that's uh, an interesting um, similarities and um, difference between modern epistemology um, and uh, so this conception of knowledge. We look. I was going to look at different uh, different types of knowledge and different types of ignorance and the and the definition of ignorance as well but it's already coming to 20 minutes so i don't want to go over that so 
I'll I'll look at it in in the next video. Thank you.